Now we begin our phylum Annelida. This incorporates earthworms, leeches, and polychaete worms. Um, you should have your outline note packet in front of you. Um, there is a diagram that you will be labeling, so pay attention to the slides um, so that you'll be able to label all the parts. It will be very helpful if you get them labeled before we do the dissection in class. Um, it will help you understand where things will be located. You can see in our evolutionary tree, they are more advanced than our flatworms and roundworms, more advanced than our mollusks because now segmentation has evolved. A few characteristics about the annelids. Um, they, their name comes from the Latin term annelus, which means little ring. Um, and they, if you look at them, their, their bodies are segmented or they look like they have rings around them. And these different segments on their body are called metamers. And there's, uh, when we dissect them, you'll be able to see that there's a tissue layer that kind of separates the segments in, internally. On the outside of them, they also have another structure called setae. And these are little hair-like structures um, and, and it doesn't occur in all of the annelids, but it occurs in some of them. It's located usually on their underside and it helps them uh, to move. They, they can help um, like earthworms have them. and You'll be able to feel them on your earthworms when we dissect them, that um, they feel a little rough on the bottom. And those are their setae that help them um, maneuver through dirt. These guys have a true coelom and uh, their body cavity, the coelom, is divided by septa, the different little uh, uh, divisions in their body. The segments of annelids bodies are separated by internal walls called septa, and uh, most of these segments are the same. A few of them are modified for specific things, um, but pretty much from the middle of them all the way back, uh, everything is almost identical within each septa, but towards their front end. So they have this um, stretch of flat tissue called a clitellum, and, and you'll see in a, in a future diagram here in the notes, um, everything from there forward is going to be a little bit different in their septa. And they'll be specialized for digestion. Um, some areas have photoreceptors or antenna on, on different annelids. Um, and you'll be able to see that on our earthworm that we dissect. So here is a diagram just showing you what the quality of metamerism looks like. You can see the dividing tissue separating all the different little segments. Annelids can be gigantic. Um, as you can see, these two ladies are holding some rather large types of segmented worms. The average length of those um, for the, the biggest kind, this giant earthworm, is 1.36 meters or 54 inches. And they did find one that was about 22 feet long or 6.7 6 meters long. Um, but it was very skinny. It was only two centimeters in diameter. The smallest known annelid is uh, only about half of a millimeter wide, or long rather, um, full grown. So that's pretty tiny. So they, they can range in size quite a bit. So these are some of the internal structures um, in an earthworm. And you can see that they have a complete digestive tract. It's you know, one way it goes in the mouth and then it'll go out the anus. Um, but it goes from their mouth to their pharynx. And then if you follow it down, um, it goes into an area called the crop. The crop is more for storage. And then the food gets passed into their gizzard, which is a muscular area that will help grind up the food. And then it'll pass through the intestine. You can see some of the other structures in here. It has, um, it, it doesn't have one heart. It has like aortic arches in here to help pump blood. Um, and they, 
will have uh, they are um, hermaphroditic and so they will have both male and female um, reproductive structures but they do not self fertilize so they have to um, swap sperm basically with another worm to be able to fertilize their eggs General body plan, they are all going to be cylindrical. The annelids have bilateral symmetry. They do have a true coelom. And these are the first phylum to show up in evolution with segmentation, which gives them an advantage for um, to helping them move. And it is advantageous also to help their body specialize even more than organisms have already. Um, for nutrition or feeding, annelids have a complete digestive system. Food goes from the mouth to the anus. They, their general structure of their digestive system is what I described before. The um, food goes through their mouth, pharynx, esophagus, crop, gizzard, intestine, and anus. They do have a pharynx that's used to help um, grind up larger particles of food so they can pass it into the crop. Some annelids are carnivorous. The carnivorous annelids can extend their pharynx through their mouth, and um, they generally can have little jaws within there that help them hold on to their prey. In earthworms, the pharynx acts like a pump that kind of pulls in soil and other detritus through their mouth and forces it into their gut. In parasitic annelids, like leeches, the pharynx is used to suck blood from the host. Some aquatic annelids can be filter feeders and they have uh, fan-like structures that are attached to them to help catch food particles. As far as uh, obtaining oxygen, uh, aquatic annelids will breathe through gills. Many annelids will take in oxygen and give off carbon dioxide through their skin. They do this through diffusion. So that means the skin has to stay moist in order for gas exchange to occur. The terrestrial annelids, like the earthworms, will secrete a thin protective coat called a cuticle to hold the moisture to them. Um, the worms that end up out in the driveway in a hot, hot, sunny day, their cuticle doesn't hold in moisture well enough for them to be running around on pavement, so they, they tend to dry out and get crispy. Circulatory systems, they do have a closed circulatory system and they have two blood vessels that run down the length of their body. Um, and then instead of one heart, they have ring vessels that um, kind of, they, they do have like a rhythmic pumping or contraction to them that um, sometimes they are referred to as their hearts, but they're called aortic arches and they help pump blood throughout their bodies. Um, and some annelids, they all they have is just the movement of them helps to move blood throughout their bodies. For excretion, um, they can move solid waste through their digestive system, and the cellular wastes are removed by nephridia, and these are sort of like our kidneys. Um, they have nephridia in each of their segments and um, they help filter out any of the metabolic wastes. Nervous system is pretty well developed. They have sense organs in their front area. Um, they have, some of them have sensory tentacles. They can have photoreceptors which detect light. Some of them do have eyes and they'll have statocysts which help detect gravity so they know if they're up or down. So a statocyst, like I said, is an organ used to detect gravity while they're in the water. And then some of the annelids will have um, just cells in their skin that help them detect chemicals or touch or um, temperature you know things like that they'll just be able to because you know if an earthworm is tunneling through the dirt they're not going to be able to need to see light so they rely on other uh, sensory cells to help them maneuver and find food
As far as movement goes, the annelids will have uh, two groups of muscles. They have longitudinal muscles that run from the front to the back of them, and this helps them get shorter when they contract these muscles. And then the other set of muscles are uh, circular muscles, and they go around the worm. So when the when these muscles get contracted, it helps make the worm skinnier. And between these two muscles, it helps them um, move and travel when these muscles contract and relax. Here's a diagram under a microscope showing the setae on the bottom of an annelid. For reproduction, I did tell you that the um, mo many of the annelids are hermaphroditic, and um, they do reproduce sexually. Some of them can reproduce by budding, but during copulation uh, for the hermaphroditic ones, they have to line up um, opposite directions so that they can donate sperm to each other. And um, the clitellum, or that wide fleshy part of them, helps secrete a mucus that holds them in place during copulation, and then it can create like a cocoon where these fertilized eggs can develop. The diagram showing you where the reproductive organs are located, you can actually count back a number of segments and find where the uh, seminal receptacle openings are and um, where the ovaries, like the oviduct is, they're on um, specific segments, and you'll be looking for those when we dissect our earthworms. Here's what their trochophore larvae look like, just like in the mollusks. Um, annelids have trochophore larvae too, so they have indirect development. And this is just showing you how they develop from the trochophore larvae into their adult form.